Right, so Joe's been here, he's been doing some insulation resistance testing on some of our larger drums. We thought we'd showcase some of the tests that we do in our factory. So it's a bit above and beyond your normal IR test on a finished cable. Is we get a 20 meter sample, we're gonna have to take these cores out and then we're gonna submerge them underwater. So in here, we've got an elevated temperature. We submerge the cores underwater and then we're testing insulation resistance. And that way we're testing full contact with the water around the core, any holes, any defects will be picked up and it'll be recorded as a fault. Two hours later. So the cable's been underwater for two hours, 70 degrees Celsius, and now we come for testing. We're gonna connect to the metal tank, which then puts it in contact with the water, and we're testing the insulation resistance of the blue insulation. So we want 500 volts to run for 60 seconds. So we've got our reading, we can now come back to the British standard for this cable, which is a 6242Y1.5. We have a minimum insulation resistance at 70 degrees in here. We can see that we're looking for a minimum of 0.011 megohm per kilometre. To convert this into megohms kilometres, we need to get the actual reading of 2.97. We're multiplying it by the length, 20 metres, divide it by 1,000, and that will give us a result of 0.0594 megohm kilometers so that is about six times higher than the british standard minimum and then the final test is long-term insulation resistance so this one would last for 10 days and it's at 60 or 90 degrees celsius and we're doing the ir test for a long period of time so this is testing water absorption if you like and how much the cores will absorb water and if the insulation resistance is still suitable. So we're now going to set this running for the 10 day duration. So before that, we'll just check the temperature of the water, which is controlled on these controllers. So we're at 60 degrees Celsius in that third tank. We're in tank three. We can power that up and this should go up to 200 volts. And then it should stay at 200 volts when we come back in 10 days time. 10 years later. So we're gonna have a quick look how the cable's getting on. It should still be at 200 volts in the test tank. And if it is, then that cable successfully passed the long-term insulation resistance test. And there we are. So that's our enhanced insulation resistance tests that we do on all the cables we manufacture, whether that's twin earth or flexibles, but we're testing more than an electrician can test. So we're taking the cores out, we're making sure that it's exposed at every single point and making sure the insulation resistance is fit for purpose and good for your installs.